What up, players? It's War Boss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to a video on how to get your Loon Boss on Giant Cave Squig painted up to this standard. It's what I consider a pretty decent tabletop standard. It's not going to win any awards, but if you want to get your model onto the table looking pretty, pretty close to, uh, I guess, what a you know what a more basic version of the box art would be. Yeah, never, com never compare yourself to the box art. <laughs> You're gonna come out feeling like, oh man, I need to, I need to practice some more. But I'm having, I'm having a great time painting up this loon boss. I think he looks really great with his spear charging in on this giant cave squig. Let me tell you the colors we're gonna be using. First of all, you have the option of spray painting, priming your model all in black. Or what I did was I kept the rider separate from the cave squig and I primed the cave squig in red. Mephiston Red was a color that I used, but a lot of game com companies have different um, colors for their red primer. Whichever one looks closest to a good bright tomato-y cave squig color would probably work. So you can use that, and I use just a black primer for the Night Goblin. Boom Boss, God, I gotta stop calling them that. To clean up any black areas that uh, get metal paint or anything else on them, I used Abaddon Black and uh, Mephiston Red to touch up and highlight any of the cave squake skin. The rest of the colors that I used are as follows. For the base coats, we used... Where are they? A little bit of Balthazar Gold for his little uh, moon there. I used Lead Belcher for all of his armor, the loon boss. For the loon boss's skin, I used Death World Forest. For the teeth of the cave squig, I used Rackarth Flesh. I also used Abaddon Black for the horns. The tongue, this bright pink tongue, actually took me a couple of coats of Emperor's Children. And if I could go back, what I would do is paint the tongue in a more solid base color like a Bugman's Glow. Something that's a little bit pink but maybe not as bright and then you build up the colors with this because after painting the model in or, or spray painting the model red what I found was that the uh, Emperor's Children just really didn't cover as well as I'd hoped it would. I used Averland Sunset for the squigs eyeballs as well as the little spider down here. For the stalks of the mushrooms on the base, I used Wraithbone. And for the heads of the mushrooms on the base, I used Dryad Bark. So this model is very simple to paint up. Once you get all those base colors down, you're going to want to go back with uh, some shades. And the shades that I used are... Not known oil. Here we go. Agrax Earthshade for just about everything. And then for the goblin skin was the only thing I used a different color. And for the goblin skin, I used Coelia Green Shade. Where's my Coelia Green Shade? It's a wash that. Oh, okay. I guess thought I had it around me, but I guess I guess I don't. Or maybe it fell off the table when I wasn't looking. Coelia Green Shade for the skin color. If you don't have that, you can go with Agrax Earth Shade. Is fine. Or you can use BL Tan Green if you want a little bit more of a cartoony green color. And yeah, that's going to be it. I hope you guys enjoy watching the video. I'm sorry if the model tends to dip out of frame a little bit. Igor is still getting used to the setup and running the camera here. Isn't that right, Igor? It's absolute rubbish, master. I want to get a Canon T7i. And I can really do some magic. All right, thanks, Igor. And uh, yeah, he... He looks pretty good. I'm I'm very happy with how long it took me to get him up to this uh, to this state. If you want to just whip it, whip through the process and get him there, I think it could take you probably less than maybe an hour. I'm not sure how long this video is. I can't see how long it's all gonna be for this first part. But stay tuned if you want to see me get him even to a higher quality standard, make him really pop on the high tabletop standard video. And if you would like to support my studio, then uh, you could join the Players Club. And if you want to post work of your own and connect with me on Discord, you could follow our Discord. Links in the description below. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment before you go. 
what do you think of the loon boss? What's the word? Moon moon spite gits. Gosh, I'm just gonna call them Age of Sigmar Night Goblins. That with all these names. All right, gang, we're gonna get started with our loon boss here. So after we primed him, left him to dry for a little bit, we are going to get started on painting him up. And the first color we're gonna use is Steel Legion Drab. We're gonna just be painting the spear shaft. And so, let's begin. If I want it to be a little bit more um, a little bit more acceptable. Oops, sorry about that. Igor! Sorry, master. Then I would have um, pinned this guy to something, but as uh, we're not going to be putting him on his squig yet, Just hold him. All right. And uh, I just wanted to say as the year 2020 comes to a close, guys, thank you so much for checking out my videos, supporting me, and watching. It's It's been a crazy time, and uh, I can't wait to post more videos, do more in the community again. All right, Lead Belcher. Let's finish off the rest of the spear. Actually, it's probably not a good idea to do lead belcher since I just accidentally painted the cap here at the bottom of the spear, but that's okay. We'll paint all of the other areas that need the lead belcher, and then we'll go and hit that bottom part later. Yeah, as you can see, I got a new uh, a new ring light to shine a little bit more light on what I'm doing. Um, I got a new microphone, so hopefully that's working out well for you guys. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to what 2021 is going to be bringing. A lot of exciting stuff. Yeah, I'm, I probably shouldn't be touching that yet. And uh, let's see, let's get this shoe now. We'll get the other shoe later. Oh, I like that his armor goes all the way up to his knees. I mean, look how goofy and cartoony this armor is. It is fantastic. Yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be kind of weird to do. Um, think until I can actually get him on his squig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish painting the silver and then we are going to move over to the squig because there's just no real way to paint this guy up the way that I want to and be able to have him in focus and everything until he's on his uh, squig. So let's finish the armor bits. So we don't have to worry about them later. Okay, I think, let me just double check the box art. I think that he has a silver, yeah, it looks like his jaw is silver. I think uh, it might be more fun to paint it yellow. So should I do that? Should I go against the box art? Nah, let's, let's go with the box art because some people want to watch my channel for uh, tips on how to paint up their miniatures to replicate the Games Workshop standard and Games Workshop did a silver armor for the face. So that's what we're gonna do. He looks, om I like that he looks almost like a steampunky with all the rivets. But then again, rivets just look steampunky to me. All 
right? Yep. I think looking back, I probably would have kept this guy on his squig. I think after, maybe after you base, just like a spray prime these guys, a spray prime the rider, it probably would be a good idea to glue him on, just so you're not holding him in your fingers like this. So that's my that's my less oh, that's my lesson that I learned. Keep your miniature um, once you prime him. Throw him on that squig. So speaking of squigs, then let's let this brown wood color and silver color dry, and we're going. We're gonna jump over to the squig. All right, he looks fantastic, all primed up, ready to go. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to paint his teeth and talons. His talons we're gonna paint with Abaddon Black to make them uh, nice and dark. His talons and his horns. So we're gonna be getting talons here. So when you're painting horns, I like to poke at where the base is and then draw the paint up. So you're dropping the paint close to where the horns meet the skin and then you're drawing that color all the way up. That way you don't get heavy deposits of paint at the top, at the tip of the horns. You're able to spread them out after you drop the, drop the paint at the base. I gotta say, my first army ever that I painted was Orcs and Goblins, Warhammer Fantasy, and uh, I had that old starter set. Actually, the very first one was, I guess, Goblins, right? Goblins and High Elves from, I'm not sure if it was the third edition Warhammer Fantasy. We're gonna move on to Rakkarth Flesh for the Teeth. Uh, and I just, I did not have fun painting those guys at all, and then I got back into the hobby 10 years later, and they had just released the Battle for Blackfire Pass with the Night Goblins and the Dwarves. And I thought, these guys are just fantastic. They look terrific with the spears and as well as the uh, bows, those little Night Goblin figures. I thought they were so much fun. I didn't paint any dwarves. I think the tricky thing for Games Workshop or any any game company, if you're doing like collectible miniatures where they expect you to build them up and paint them up, right, is you want to get people interested in the game and you want to get them interested in the hobby side of it. But when you're designing your starter kit, you got to keep in mind that like these are people that you're trying to get into the hobby. They've never picked up a paintbrush before probably they wouldn't know the first thing about painting miniatures and uh well i guess now you've got youtube so you could learn it but man when when they give you armies like space marines where they expect you to like space marines are supposed to look like you know the cream of the crop of human civilization and evolution and genetical engineering and stuff and they've got like the best armor and uh, in fantasy, it was like high elves in the old days. Or there was one starter set, I think, with lizardmen and Bretonians. 
I guess it's kind of intimidating, right? Because you get these armies that are supposed to have very artistic and uh, very precisely made war gear and equipment and regalia and insignias and designs. And yet, as a new hobbyist, like, you gotta get used to using a brush. That's why I think the orcs and goblins, necrons, maybe chaos, are, like, the perfect starter armies if you've never painted before, if you're, like, completely new to the hobby. What are... The, sometimes people ask me, what are the best starter kits or starting armies if you've never never hobbied before and I think it's definitely orcs and goblins even space orcs because you can be messy you don't have to have clean lines and uh, you know smooth paint jobs it's okay to be messy yeah I guess that's good for now we're going to move on to painting the tongue. And let's see, for the tongue, I'm going to see if I can find a nice pink color. Look at that, Emperor's Children. No sooner had I said I'm going to find myself a nice pink color that I... Oh, Gaze Workshop, you screwed me. I found the Emperor's Children and I saw... Oh, I haven't even opened it yet. Fantastic. And I popped it open. So maybe I... I guess maybe I did use it before. Maybe it was open. It looks like it's been used, but I feel like I just popped it open and oof. There's liquid there. I feel it. Shake it. All right. Yeah. That's fine. I can work with it. So we're going to get some of that Emperor's Children. Spread it out on my wet palette here. Slap it on this Squiggy's tongue. Yeah. Yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. I know it's uh, these tutorials can be a long watch. I appreciate you taking the journey with me. Today, the goal is we're going to get this squig and this loon boss up to a nice tabletop standard. We're going to do that with base coats and shades and just a teeny tiny bit of a highlight, but nothing too crazy. The goal is get him on the battlefield as soon as possible. All right. Man, I'm taking a look right now at the <laughs> at these mushrooms. I don't even know like where I'm, how am I even going to begin to paint these things? Okay. Sure, why not? Let's go. Let's start off with um Dryad bark. While our squiggy dries, we're going to move on to the base. Usually, I, I try not to put uh, any any basing techniques on, on these videos, but uh, this is actually, since it's built into the model, let's do it. It's interesting because I've seen some gloom spite gets figures or boxes where the bases the mushrooms everything looks completely whack so wacky and crazy like the mushrooms have faces they're like bright crazy blue colors oops sorry about that with this we're just going to be painting the mushrooms and the creepy spider thing And then we're going to leave the rest of it. So, speaking of the creepy spider thing, we're going to do Abaddon Black. I'm also just going to paint Abaddon Black on the entire base itself.
and I could try to paint the uh, head of the spider or maybe the stalks of the mushrooms but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the black and the brown paints have a chance to dry. Next we're going to uh, hit that shackle, that broken shackle with some lead belcher. It's such a fun model. I love painting squigs. Oh, I put a little too much on my brush there. And if at any time you make a mistake, then you can always go back with the uh, corn red and fix any mistakes that you make. Look at that, my lead belcher is thinned out. Looks like none of it got where I wanted it to go. So, that's a bummer. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit, and then we'll go back and uh, fix it up. What else can we do? Let's hit the eyeballs with Averlyn Sunset. I think I might be using, the brush might be a little too big also. Let me switch, up, switch it up and use a smaller size brush. Okay, when you're painting the eyeballs, it's good to really isolate what is an eyeball and what is in like the bag under the eye. A lot of models, especially human models, have very pronounced bags under the eyes. And a lot of times new painters and experienced painters will paint the bags as if those were the eyeballs, but are really there to emphasize the eyeballs. A lot of times in these figures, the eyeballs themselves are a lot smaller than you would think they would be. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Averland Sunset and I'm going to tease the paint along the spider creature. I try to stay away from the black area because I know, oh, look at that. I know it's uh, still drying and it's probably not going to be dry anytime soon, so I just want to get that uh, spot of color so it's not going to be such a big step when I have to do it later on. Just let that dry. Come back to it in a bit. I'm gonna see if my lead belcher is workable now. Yeah, I mean, sometimes all it takes is a good shake. I just, I really hate when paint gets all separated like this. seems to be pretty good. What I'm going to be doing is waiting for the model to dry because we can't really put on the shades until the base coats are completely dry. And it looks like, look at that tongue, that tongue is wet. It is going to be a while before that is dry. I'm going to hit the uh, stalks with wraith bone. This is going to be a gradual process because we're not too sure how 
much time it's going to take to dry the base here, the black part of the base, but I can hit the middle of the stalks and just kind of tease the color up. to take too much too much of a chance with the black areas and try just working on the center yeah look, look at that that's already mixing so it's not really much more I can do due to technical difficulties, paint's kind of keeping me from progressing as much as I'd like to. Um, but what we can do while we wait for all of this to dry is glue the loon boss on top. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some plastic glue, put the loon boss on top of the squig, and we'll come back when it's all dry and ready for the next step. All right, what I did was wait for all the paint to dry and then I went back and cleaned up a lot. You can see that the areas that had been a little bit splotchy or like the silver had not been as thick as it should have been. I went back and cleaned it up. I let the paint dry. The yellow on the spider down here, I let that dry a little bit and I went back and cleaned it up. So a little bit of touch up, oh, especially like on the tongue. This Emperor's Children pink is very thin and so when you apply only one coat, it's not going to have very good coverage, especially over an already heavy coloring underneath. Like if you had a black base coat, painting Emperor's Children right over would have made it spread a lot. So I did a couple of passes with that and it worked a lot better. If you have Mephiston Red, that is going to be the color you use to tidy up your squig skin. So I've been using a lot of that color and then just all the other tones. So the last thing we're gonna do is paint the base color for the flesh of the loon boss on the squig. And then we're gonna hit it, the entire thing with some washes to make it look a little bit uh, better, give it some depth. And then once the washes are dry, we're gonna lightly touch up some areas. And that's gonna be it for this tabletop standard loon boss on giant cave squig. So the color we're going to be painting the Loon Boss's skin is Death World Forest. So I'm going to give that a good shake. And this is going to be the last base color we paint on the model. So I like that there's not really many colors. Very simple color scheme. It helped to once, yeah, once we had that plastic glue dried once the rider is on the squig it's a lot better I think in the old days we would have built up from wa flesh or some other goblin colored flesh tone but since they are going for a lighter skin color for our green skins. Death World Forest is the color of choice now. Okay, there is a little bit of skin that shows on the arm. If you mess this part up, don't worry. You just repaint the sleeves in Abaddon Black. Okay, and the last bit. So we're really only painting the fingers, the little bit of sleeves popping out, or the arm that's showing underneath the sleeves. Then we're gonna hit the head. Now, tricky thing with painting the head of the goblin is that it's a flat dome surface. So you don't want to get too much paint on it. I think I might've had too much on my brush. You want to leave most of that paint on your wet palette. And then... And 
use your angles, you can turn your model around so that you can really get underneath all of the different layers. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. Well, can you actually see his, yeah, yeah, it looks like you can see a little bit of his leg. So we'll paint that as well. Perfect. And I was wrong. You actually do have a little bit of gold showing there. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our Balthazar gold. Balthazar gold is a nice red gold color. And it's perfect for um, goblins. All right. What I did was wait for all the paint to dry. And then I went back and cleaned up a lot. You can see that the areas that had been a little bit splotchy or like the silver had not been as thick as it should have been. I went back and cleaned it up. I let the paint dry. The yellow on the spider down here, I let that dry a little bit and I went back and cleaned it up. So a little bit of touch up, oh, especially like on the tongue. This Emperor's Children pink is very thin. And so when you apply only one coat, it's not going to have very good coverage, especially over an already heavy coloring underneath like if you had a black base coat painting emperor's children right over would have made it spread a lot so i did a couple of passes with that and it worked a lot better if you have mephiston red that is going to be the color you use to tidy up your squig skin so i've been using a lot of that color and then just all the other tones so the last thing we're going to do is paint the base color for the flesh of the loon boss on the squig and then we're going to hit it the entire thing with some washes to make it look a little bit uh, better, give it some depth. And then once the washes are dry, we're going to lightly touch up some areas. And that's going to be it for this tabletop standard loon boss on Giant Cave Squig. So the color we're going to be painting the loon boss's skin is Death World Forest. So I'm going to give that a good shake. And this is going to be the last base color we paint on the model. So I like that there's not really many colors. Very simple color scheme. It helped to once, yeah, once we had that plastic glue dried, once the rider is on the squig, it's a lot better. I think in the old days we would have built up from wa flesh or some other goblin colored flesh tone but since they are going for a lighter skin color for our green skins death world forest is the color of choice now Okay, there is a little bit of skin that shows on the arm. If you mess this part up, don't worry. You just repaint the sleeves in Abaddon Black. Okay, and the last bit. So we're really only painting the fingers, the little bit of sleeves popping out, or the arm that's showing underneath the sleeves. Then we're gonna hit the head now, the tricky thing with painting the head of the goblin is that it's a flat dome surface, so you don't want to get too much paint on it. I think I might have had too much on my brush. You want to leave most of that paint on your wet palette. And then... Use your angles. You can turn your model around so that you can really get underneath all of the different layers. Okay, we're going to let that dry. Well, can you actually see his? Yeah, it looks like you can see a little bit of his leg. So we'll paint that as well. Perfect. And I 
was wrong. You actually do have a little bit of gold showing there. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our Balthazar gold. Balthazar gold is a nice red gold color. And it's perfect for um, goblins. Orcs and goblins. They're not going to be... It's not a... Uh, so once we find our Balthazar gold, we're just going to be painting the tip of this moon here. And for any of your orcs and goblins or space orcs or or anything like that, unless you want to really go with the, the Death Skulls having a lot of ostentatious gold colored bits, Balthazar gold is a perfect color. It's nice and almost brassy but it's still a nice gold color. So we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna hit it with, hit the whole thing with a nice Agrax Earth Shade. So our final color is gonna be Agrax Earth Shade. We're gonna just uh, cover the whole model in Agrax Earth Shade, except for the tongue. The tongue we are gonna leave in uh, that pinkish color. If you're just doing a very simple tabletop level or standard, then there's no real reason to shade it um, in in this Agrax Earthshade color. Because the effect of Agrax Earthshade is to kind of dirty up the model. Give it some depth and tone. But not going so dark like with Nuln Oil where it's Gonna turn the model almost black. Also, we're not gonna be painting the goblin's skin with Agrax Earth Shade. That is actually gonna be painted with Coelia Green Shade. So when you're painting these armor plates, try not to get that color on the goblin skin. If you do accidentally get it on the tongue like I did, I just uh, dip my brush in some water and just drag it off to the side. You can even drag it down into the teeth or the bottom of the mouth. trying to get it everywhere on the silver you can see how it shifts the tone makes it a little bit more like a dirty iron that's kind of the look we're going for these gloom spite gets their their gear you would imagine is gotten old and dirty and is very weathered covered in grime for the uh, high tabletop standard video, I might even do some rust. I think rust would be perfectly in line with their equipment. Definitely some corrosion and some wear and tear on this spear. Yeah, the trickiest thing with using any kind of wash where you're going all over the entire model is just covering all the angles. That's why I like to be able to use, sometimes I use like a, uh, a cork or maybe like a pill bottle or I've known people who use like prescription pill bottles and just put some blue tack on the top. This one I'm just kind of holding it with my hands, but usually I do like to use my uh, cork handle here. Just put some blue tack on the top of it, stick that model on top so it sticks, and then you can turn it. Your hand can rest really easily around the handle. Doesn't have to be a cork, like I said, you could use 
anything in that cylindrical shape that will be easy for your hand to wrap around. And I found that using that really does help me. Has uh, some benefit for my hand. My hand doesn't cramp as much after uh, a long session of painting. All right, now we're gonna move on to Coelia Green Shade. Games Workshop has two green washes. This Coelia Green Shade, as well as BL Tan Green, which I think is a lot more, a lot greener. This is almost like a blue, bluish tone. So I'm trying to get it on the skin, but I, I'm noticing it's also getting on the equipment a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's okay. Get a little bit of that color on the silver. Gives it, gives it some life. Look at that painting inspiration hitting me while I'm working. Let's hit all that silver with it. <laughs> yeah. All right, and like I said, that tongue we're going to leave because we're going to eventually highlight that guy up with some uh, pink tones for the uh, high tabletop video. But right now it looks pretty good. I think that bright, really vibrant pink color is not something you see in a lot of tabletop miniatures. So we're going to leave it and we're going to let our guy dry and then we will come back for the uh, highlighting of the shaded colors. That's gonna be the last step for our Loon Boss on Cave Squig. So we'll see you in a couple of hours when this guy dries. All right, he's looking pretty good. I'm actually very pleased with how it looks now that all of the paint is dried. So we're not gonna to do too much of a touch up on him. I thought we'd need to do a lot, but in fact, all I wanna really do is go back and highlight a little bit of the squig skin with Mephiston Red, just enough to show that uh, we know where those highlights are gonna go. We're not gonna do too much, but we are going to color in the details here on his little squig head. So let's go. So anytime we're doing faces, we always focus on doing short strokes vertical, meaning back to front. So we, we can pick out the details and that uh, vertical paint stroke will allow us to really draw the paint down the brows and make it a lot harder for us to mess up by accident. The easiest part to paint highlights for are the brows, the nose, and then the upper lip. We're just going to pick out little areas where the shade kind of left us some hints on which parts we want to highlight. The last is right here, the jawbone under the eyes. Repeat the same on this side. Again, going back to front using short strokes to really find those details. And yeah, the goal is we want to leave that original uh, Agrax Earthshade wash in the shadows. And now that we're going to the rest of the squig what we want to do is continue the short strokes and then it's going to give you almost a comic book cell shaded illusion which I think perfectly matches with our squig just a lot of short strokes all following the same direction back to the front. And then you want to blend them over the larger muscle areas or the areas that are closer to the light, like right here. I love how when you look at the squigs, proportions 
their legs are so skinny, like they're not really bulging with muscle. It's their really cartoonish uh, faces, which looks really big and out of proportion. Squigs don't like doing leg day. So I'm being pretty particular with these highlights, but if you're just if your goal is to just get this guy on the tabletop, you really only need to do the face for this part. The shade does a lot of the work for you. And if you're a new painter, maybe you just want to do the base coat and the shade, a little bit of a highlight. The squig butt. <laughs> Squeak butt. All right. I'm going to come back to the feet. I, I really want to just finish the uh, body, the main areas of the body. So I'm... Anytime you've got like the distended jaw, the stretched out muscles... You're doing that back to front action, but follow the lines of the figure and it's a great guidepost for you. Yeah, I think because this is just a quality tabletop standard like a low tabletop standard we're gonna just highlight up the squig since that's about 80 to 90 percent of the model that you see when you put this thing on the table you don't really see the little loon boss and he's all in black robes anyways so we know you want to get him on the table we'll just leave him shaded unhighlighted and the last thing we want to do is pick out the uh, most extreme muscles musculature and bones that pop out of his foot just so that the light can have something to catch. Great areas to focus when you're painting feet are the toes, the ankles, the heels, Anywhere where you see a little bit of that extended like bone bits popping out so that you can really see what's going to catch the light. That stretched out muscle. Ooh, man, that looks so great. This is what a great sculpt. You really see how good a sculpt is once you are painting up the highlights. All right, how does that look? That looks pretty good. I'm gonna give him a little bit more right here. Just fill in that shadow where that pimple is on his forehead. Yeah, that looks really nice. So uh, that is gonna do it for our tabletop standard. Loon Boss on Giant Cave Squig. Very simple base coat and uh, shading with Agrax Earthshade and the Coelia green shade, and then highlighting just the squig back up. If you'd like to see me highlight uh, even more, do some different color tones and uh, some various techniques, then you can stay tuned for the, uh, the, the high tabletop standard video that's going to be coming out. I hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. It was really a lot of fun. It took me a while longer than I thought it would, but uh, I really enjoyed it. So hope you guys are doing well out there. We will see you in the next video. Laters!